In the mid-20th century, the world looked up. And for the first time, not just with wonder, but also with ambition. The Cold War was raging and two superpowers were locked in. The United States and the Soviet Union. They turned their rivalry skyward and in their desperation for global influence, space quickly became the playground of the rich. So while their rockets thundered, much of the world watched from the side. But not India. India was a newly independent nation. It was still trying to find its footing. Yet it showed the world that you don't need to throw cash around like confetti to reach the final frontier. You need the will to make it happen. This is the story of how a nation entered a race it was never expected to run and did not just punch above its weight, but also rewrote the rules. The year was 1962. India's space program was born. It was called INCOSPAR. That's short for the Indian National Committee for Space Research, INCOSPAR. And the driving force behind it was this man, Vikram Sarabhai. He was one of the country's greatest scientists, and he chose Thumba as a launch pad of India's space ambitions. This is a small fishing village in Kerala near Tiruvananthapuram off the Arabian Sea. Here, a local church was turned into a lab. The priest's home acted as an office for the mission. And on November 21st, 1963, scientists carried rocket parts on a bicycle. They took the parts to the launch site, and in the evening, a rocket soared from the Thumba launch pad a 715-kilogram Nike Apache rocket. It was made in America and carried a French payload. It lifted off, rose to 208 kilometers, released a cloud of vapor and painted the sky orange. And with that, India's first rocket launch was a success. It was a great start, but not enough for India to take up more complex missions. For that, you needed more structure, more clarity and more self-reliance. India needed an action plan to back its aspirations. So in 1969, on the anniversary of India's Independence Day, INCOSPAR evolved into ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization. And from then on, ISRO began pushing the boundaries of India's space prowess. In 1975, ISRO launched its first satellite. It was called Aryabhat. It was named after the famous Indian mathematician and astronomer Aryabhat. This satellite was launched by a Soviet rocket, but it was designed and built by ISRO, and this was a major milestone. Over the next decade, India took one leap after another. It was a roller coaster of successes, failures, and learnings. In 1984 came a monumental shift, and Indian went to space. Indian cosmonaut Rakesh Sharma. He became the first Indian ever to go to space. He was part of a joint mission between ISRO and the Soviet space program. Sharma spent seven days, 21 hours and 40 minutes in space, but this journey was years in the making. In 1981, India joined hands with the Soviet Union. They had a short list of about 50 pilots. Finally, Rakesh Sharma was picked for the mission, and it was no mean feat. Going to space has never been easy. Not today, certainly not back then. Being in space for even a few hours can be punishing. Rakesh Sharma underwent grueling tests. He was tested for claustrophobia. He was locked in a room with artificial lights for 72 hours. He was put on a controlled diet. He was tested by Olympic trainers for strength, for endurance and for speed. Plus, he was given three months to learn Russian. Given that most of the training was in that language, he had to learn it. None of it was easy, but Rakesh Sharma made it happen. India made it happen. On 3rd April 1984, a Soviet rocket blasted off. It was launched from a spaceport in the then Soviet Republic of Kazakhstan. It had two Russian astronauts on board, along with Rakesh Sharma from India. When he was up there, he was asked how India looked from space. His reply? Meaning, India is the best in the world. And this was not just a poetic answer or a romantic observation. This was a moment of national pride. The words carried deep significance and symbolism. They were borrowed from a legendary poem written during the British colonial rule, the rule that ravaged India. So when an Indian in space echoed those words, he was sending a message to the world that India's setbacks were temporary and its rise inevitable. 
The next decade was marked by intense research. New innovations, new rockets, including the PSLV, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, PSLV. It is known as a workhorse of ISRO. Its creation marked the beginning of a series of successful flights. Around this time, a major shift was also underway globally. It was the era of the dot-com boom. The internet was taking the world by storm. So at the turn of the century, ISRO developed GSLV, the Geosynchronous Transfer Orbit, to cater to growing communication needs. But these wins came after many hurdles. To build advanced rockets, India needed more efficient fuel. And there was only one answer, cryogenic engine. This uses liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as fuel. So it is lighter, it gives more thrust. This is what India needed. But we did not have the technology to make it, so we thought of procuring the engines from other countries. India first talked to Japan, nothing came of it. Then we talked to Europe, again no luck. Then India signed a deal with Russia. New Delhi sent scientists to Moscow to work with researchers. But the Russians were very secretive about the technology. And discussions were limited. Plus, the US did not like this one bit. It feared that India would use this tech to build ballistic missiles. Indian scientists rejected this repeatedly, yet Washington raised objections. It slapped sanctions on ISRO. It tried to cripple our space program, but India remained undeterred. It set out to build its own cryogenic engine. And in the early 2000s, ISRO achieved this ambitious goal. India was far from done. Next, we set our eyes on the moon. Again, critics, mainly in the West, mocked India. They said we had too much poverty for such rich dreams. Indian scientists gave them a fitting reply. In 2008, we launched Chandrayaan-1. This was India's first moon mission. It orbited the lunar surface at a height of 100 kilometers. It mapped the moon and it did valuable research. Chandrayaan-1 was the first to confirm the presence of water in lunar soil. This excited scientists everywhere. But the critics remained blinded by their prejudice. They refused to believe India's strength in space. Irrespective, India kept raising the bar. The next target was Mars. And this was going to be tough. But this too was achieved. In 2013, India launched the Mars Orbiter mission, Mangalyaan. This was India's first interplanetary mission. It successfully inserted itself into the Martian orbit in its very first attempt. And this made India the first country in Asia and the fourth in the world to achieve this feat. Only the US, Russia and Europe had previously sent missions to Mars. But India succeeded in its first attempt. And in this respect, it outperformed everyone else. And the best part, India did it all on an economy ticket. At a nominal cost of $74 million, this was the cheapest interplanetary mission ever, the cheapest anywhere in the world, and it came as a major reality check to the world. In Ahmedabad, if you have to go to 1 km auto rickshaw, it feels like 10 rupees. It feels like 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 it. हॉलीवुड की फिल्म बनाने का जितना बजट होता है उससे कम बजट में मार्स पहुंच गया है प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी राइटली सेड इंडिया रियल लाइफ मार्शल एडवेंचर कॉस्ट लेस देन हॉलीवुड स्पेस मूवीज दिस शुड है इंस्पायर द वेस्ट बट ओल हैबिट्स डाई हार्ड दे चोज रिडिक्यूल ओवर रेकग्नेशन यू मे रिमेंबर दिस कार्टून the New York Times published it. It shows a farmer with a cow knocking on the door of a room which is marked Elite Space Club. Inside, two men in Western attire sit reading a newspaper detailing India's feet. This was jealousy dressed up as mockery. And it spurred global outrage. The New York Times had to apologize for it. As for India, instead of being discouraged, it was even more determined to prove its mettle. In 2019 came Chandrayaan-2, where ISRO attempted soft landing on the moon. It was a partial success. Four years later, Chandrayaan-3 returned with a bang. Another attempt at soft landing on the moon. This time it was a success. India had gate crashed into the elite club. It became the first country in the world to land on the moon's south pole. And again, it was a budget space flight. India spent $75 million on this historic project. 
For perspective, the Hollywood space thriller Gravity had a budget of $100 million. India landed on the moon for far less. And each win fueled the fire to aim higher. This year, in 2025, India had another reason to celebrate. An Indian went to space again. Shubhanshu Shukla became the first Indian astronaut to blast off to the International Space Station. Axiom Space. He was on board the private Axiom Space Mission 4. It lifted off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Shukla carried the aspirations of 1.4 billion Indians to space. People were glued to their TV screens as he took off. They prayed, they cheered, and then they celebrated. It took more than 26 hours to get there. Shukla became the second space Indian station. to travel to space 41 years after Rakesh Sharma achieved the feat. And when up there, Shukla said, Goosebumps aside, he has a point. India's space industry is booming. It is valued at $8.4 billion. That's about 2% of the global space market. And it stands on the precipice of a major shift. By 2033, India wants to capture 8% of the global space market. It wants to grow the space economy to $44 billion. It's an ambitious plan, but not an impossible one. Over the past few years, India's space economy has seen groundbreaking advances. The government is pushing for it with reforms and the inclusion of private players. Five years ago, there were less than 50 space startups in the country. Today, there are more than 200. India is on the path to becoming a space superpower, and it is being driven by four factors. Strong government support, rapid tech innovation, ISRO's research-focused approach, and the involvement of private companies. The future of India's space looks exciting. We have Gaganyaan coming up, our human space flight mission scheduled for 2027. The plan is to launch three crew members to the orbit. By 2035, India wants to set up its own space station called the Bharatiya Antariksh Station. And by 2040, there are plans to send an Indian to the moon. So from Aryabhat to the lunar landings, the Mars missions and now Gaganyaan, India's space program has not just come a long way, it has redefined what is possible. It has shown the world that space exploration does not need bottomless budgets. It needs boundless ambition. When you have the fire in your belly, even the sky is not a limit.